Hello and a very, very warm welcome. Slightly humid as well from the Chang International Circuit. We're back, haven't raced here since 2019. And we're all set for qualifying. Four sessions, two for the GT3s, we'll kick it off, and then two for GT4. This is to qualify for the race this afternoon and the second race tomorrow. Simple to remember, qualifying one for race one, qualifying two for race two. What we have is 12 turns, but look in the background, what we have are towering clouds. It came down enormous rainfall yesterday, 40 degrees track temperature, but it's the humidity the drivers will feel. Not so much in qualifying, that's only 15 minutes in each of the four sessions, but when it comes to the two one-hour races, they're going to get pretty warm in the cockpit. But what we pray today, because the track got a little bit flooded yesterday, is that rain, if it could kindly go past the circuit, that would be very helpful indeed. Air temperature hovering around 30 degrees. We've certainly had it hotter here on previous visits, but the weather changes very quickly. So tyres, always a massively important factor here. Let's hope they can get the most out of their Pirellis. 12 turns around this four and a half kilometre circuit and uh, a little bit more gradient change than you realise and uh, great flow but just look at turn three long run into that hairpin that is where most of the passing is going to be happening through the course of this event can anyone beat the lap record set in 2018 one minute 33 almost on the nose as you can see 11 seconds faster than the GT4s but uh, time waits for no man and certainly as the rebirth of the GT World Challenge Asia uh, sponsored by Fanatec and AWS last year was a great start after two years off with the pandemic but uh, for 2023 plans are great we've got 25 cars here for the opening round of the championship first time it hasn't been held at Sepang the championship opener and there they are in their glory and when we go to the next round we will have around 40 cars coming out to play and it's not just the number of cars it's also the fact that the makeup of the teams much more interest from China in fact going down the entry list a full dozen of the drivers here and uh, a whole host of teams are coming into play as well right in the middle of the shot you can see the two Mercedes from Kraft Bamboo Racing, particularly that notably eye-catching one, number 37, yellow and red, Anthony Liu and Fabian Schiller sharing that. But uh, that And the sister car with uh, Jeffrey Lee and Maxi Gertz, very handy driver pairing there. They'll be seeing what they can do. But just to reiterate, these sessions, just 15 minutes. Driver one does session one, and that defines the grid for this afternoon's race, which will be at 3.30. There'll be a seven minute break, so just a blink of an eye and a time to wipe some sweat from a brow. And then their second driver in each of those lineups will hop aboard and see what they can do to define the grid for tomorrow's race, the second race here at the Chang International Circuit. The cars have to wait until we hit 11 o'clock local time and then the lights at pit out will go to green. Great to see some new teams here. Phantom Pro Racing brought a couple of Audis. You can see the, their cars, the Aquamarine ones, uh, sitting third and fourth in the queue. Phantom Pro Racing, a chi another Chinese team, also coming here to compete. Now, what do we say? Lap length, 4.554 kilometers, 25 cars. There should be enough space, but it's only 15 minutes. If you're fast in the driver ahead, do you hang back to make space? Or do you possibly risk ruining your lap by trying to get past to set that time? But it's about put a banker lap in and maybe see if you can improve on that. A couple of local teams, Be Quick Racing, looking on board. We've got a camera in there, the number 26 Audi. That's uh, Henk Kicks, who's based here with his Be Quick, quick, Be quick business. And the driver up from Sri Lanka, we think the first one, certainly the first one to have competed in GT World Challenge Asia, that's Ishan Pieris, uh, an up-and-coming Audi-backed Audi young driver. So look out for them. And the other Thai team is a uh, little further down the queue, just about to come into position. It's, VK, it's YK Motorsports, uh, BBR, and they're here with uh, one of many, many Mercedes. And uh, that is... Uh, Car number, sorry, but I lost it for a second. 114, that's uh, shared by Passerit uh, Promsombat and uh, Dechathorn uh, Puaka Arrowwood. So look to see how they do. And certainly we've had many Thai drivers in the championship here before. But we do have one who's a race winner in this championship, uh, Vutikorn Intrafubasak. He's sharing the number 911 AAS Motorsport. Absolute racing Porsche with Alessio Picariello. Alessio is one of a number of drivers here this weekend who will have a big change of scenery for next weekend for the Nürburgring 24 hours. But right now, right here, it's all about qualifying. So the green flag is waved and the field of 25 cars will come out. The clock at the top left of your screen 
will be very much be counting down faster than the drivers want. So do not trip yourself up. And in fact, one driver is just waiting to get away in the background there. It was the brand new NK Racing Porsche that didn't seem to want to get going. The team only got their hands on that car. How new is it? Wednesday night was the first time they got it going. And a set up overnight and out on the track. Their first time running a GT3 car. So for NK, NK Racing, car number 25, it's a very, very steep mountain to climb. But you can only go as fast as you can go, one step at a time. Right, looking at the cars going out of turn three, that's the hairpin. There's a slight rise going into the hairpin, and you can see the rise as the cars exit the hairpin and then drop over the ridge there, the two bright Aquamarine Phantom Pro Racing Audis diving down into turn four. Then you're into the infield. Turn four goes around a lake into turn five. It's a left-hander. Turn six, a left-hander over a slight brow, drop into a compression at turn seven. There's far more rise and fall than it looks when you see the circuit map. And certainly this circuit's been going for about six or seven years now, and it's maturing very, very nicely indeed. And certainly the Thai local scene grows with every year. And it's great to have some of their numbers here competing this weekend. So this is the outlap, a chance for the drivers to get the heat into their Pirellis. And then certainly the car that was at the front of the queue will see how fast it can go with nobody in front of it. I think the pit has disgorged. Well, so far, 20 of the 25 runners have exited pit lane to go out onto the circuit. So it shouldn't be too many drivers coming out and getting in the way on their outlap of the drivers who are starting to wind up a time. Now, that bright orange Porsche, that's from Porsche Centre. Okazaki, long-time supporters of the championship. They don't dip and out, in and out. They do the whole season. Right, let's ride on board with car number 15. That's one of the two Team AAI BMW M4 GT3s. And again, this is Kevin Chen as he works his way around the circuit. At this early stage, you also have to always identify the slight differences between team cars if they have two, and the sister cars got a very different front wing. And that's rather helpful to us commentators. So, already a couple of minutes have elapsed. and waiting for that first flying lap to be completed in about 90 seconds' time. And then we'll see what a quick time is. And just remember that uh, lap record, which can only obviously be set in a race was uh, just over 1 minute 33 seconds. Drivers looking for grip, headlights on for Porsche Centre Okazaki. Car number 18 pressing on, and that's Hiroaki Nagai. Track wiped clean, blasted clean, if you will, by that very, very heavy, heavy rain yesterday. Now, you can see from the graphics that Hiroaki is running in the GT3 class, yes, and in the Pro-Am section, and that is by far the largest. We've got two runners who are running the class above, which is silver, and three running in the class below, which is GT3 AM. But predominantly, this is a GT3 Pro-Am field. Now, the Porsche Center Okazaki, Carl, we'll be looking at the Porsche. Headlights ablaze on that bright orange car. Hiroaki Nagai didn't have a problem. He wanted track space. He backed off between turns three and four to make sure the car near him isn't near him anymore and now can start to wind it up. First time on the board, car number 87, the Porsche goes to top, R&B Racing, one of the new Chinese crews on board, and it's uh, Bo Yuan Wan setting that time, 1 minute 37.8. We will go faster, but that's the marker, a full six-tenths of a second faster than Chris on Chia in car number treble three, which is... Also from Phantom Pro Racing, so their car's at the front of the field. The clock continues to count down. There's Henk Kicks, based in Thailand, the Dutch racer, and races in the local championship uh, at his Be Quick brand. You can see them all around the country, selling all sorts of uh, automotive aftermarket parts. Still, Bo Yuan's time is the best. One minute, 37.8. Looking to see if any of those all silver... Well, he's in a silver crew and rightfully should be at the top of the table. Of course, pitched against the Pro-Am, we've got some very quick uh, pros along the AM, so it's about the balance in this session. It isn't really about a balance in this session, it's about the balance you get over the course of the one-hour race where the Pro and the AM both get to make their mark. And that time has been taken away from the top of the timing screens. You'll now notice car number 91 is at the top of the charts. That's uh, the BMW, one of the two BMWs from Team AAI doesn't really matter too much because they've been superseded. It's going to change and change constantly and quickly. It's now Craft Bamboo Racing and it's Anthony Liu at the top of the chart. That's bright red and yellow. Fabulous looking car. Popular with the commentators. We can pick that one out day or night. 
1 minute 37.075 seconds. And Vutikorn is Pufuvasak, local driver, car number 911 from AAS Motorsports, a Porsche as opposed to the chart topping Mercedes. And uh, that is second fastest. The gap is a quarter of a second. Looking for other changes on the board. Chris Onchia still in third place. Andrew Harianto is running fourth fastest, 1 minute 37.6. So half a second covers the top four cars at the moment. Now, let's take a look. Riding on board, car number 15. That's the second of the AAI BMW. As you can see, it's a very, very busy office indeed for Kevin Chen. Coming down towards the end of the lap. 12 turns on the circuit. This is 12 right now. Oh, and up the inside goes, <laughs> goes this. The little Toyota diving up the inside. That was the GT4 car. That shouldn't happen, but clearly very, very late on the brakes, the Toyota in the GT4 class. Any further changes? Well, I can offer you one that takes a car to the top of the charts. Car number 992, absolute racing Porsche. And it's uh, Jin Long, Bao Jin Long, who goes to the top and immediately is superseded. Now we're down to 1 minute 36.2. Andrew Harianto goes to the top. And that's car number 11, Audi Sport Asia Team Absolute. He's sharing that with James Yuquai. Of course, James will be out in the second of the two qualifying sessions. But right now, still trying to define the grid for this afternoon's race. That will kick off here at 3.30, hopefully in the dry. But right now, the drivers maximising their moments in these dry conditions around this four and a half kilometre circuit. Anthony Liu, car number 37, Kraft Bamboo Racing Mercedes was fastest. Let's see if he can improve around this lap. His uh, first sector good, second sector looking pretty tidy, but he's fallen to fifth place. I'm sure he'll pick up the pace. He seems to be getting green sectors, but the one who's going to go was top, has fallen to third, and is setting the fastest absolute first sector. Fastest absolute sector is car number 992. It's a Jin Long, and uh, it looks like he may be able to get into the one minute 35s, but still that target time, and the 35s have been breached. Indeed, Jin Long Bao getting in there, 1 minute 35.692 seconds. Who else is also making the moves? I haven't talked too much about car number 13, Audi Sport Asia. They've got 11 in second place, it's Andrew Harianto. And car number 13, Audi Sport Asia, Team Absolute. And it's uh, Sun Jing Su who's uh, really getting that one to fly. But 992, the red and gold livery, looking fantastic. And Jin Long Bao is fastest of all. He's coming out of the rise from turn three over the crest down to four. Is he improving? The answer is not this lap. But the one who is improving continues to push on and now slots into third place overall. It is car number 13 and it's Sun Jing Su. There it is. Looks fantastic with that metallic blue livery on the Audi. We've passed the halfway mark in this session. And it's 992, the Porsche from Absolute Racing at the tops. Jing Su Sun is sitting there. Well, he was third. Blink of an eye, he's gone down to sixth place. He's got traffic. Unfortunately for him, he's got one of the Climax Racing Mercedes trying to keep out of the way, but it's exactly where he wants to be. That won't help him at all. Wave your national flags. So Vutikon in through Fuvasak has gone to the top. Number 911. So two cars, two Porsches by Absolute Racing. 911 and 992. Are and were first and second, but in fact the 911 ones just had its time taken away. Ah, track limits, that's the problem. Good enough for second for first place, but immediately eliminated. Lost that lap for exceeding track limits, and suddenly it's no longer 911 at the top. It's the sister car, 992 at the top. Pretty much everyone now is starting to find their form, find a bit of grip, get the heat into those Pirellis, get them to work as the drivers like. They've got to also, of course, get clear space on the circuit. And looking at the number 13, Audi from Audi Sport Asia, Team Absolute. Sun Jing Su doing a good job. He's backed out. He's backed out the sister car with the little duck cartoons on the door. Car number 11 flashes by. That wasn't his concern. It was the car up ahead was slightly slower. So I think clever tactics from Sun Jing Su in that number 13, Audi. For Audi Sport Asia, Team Absolute. He's working his place on the track right he now thinks there aren't any slower cars ahead of him he can start to wind up make a bit of a buffer that's what he did on that lap as long as you've got a couple of seconds to good in front of you all should be fine but the target time to take provisional pole or to take actual pole you'll need to lap in about one minute 35.5 the target at the moment one minute 35.692 
and it is uh, Bao Jin Long at the top of the charts. Now let's take a look, riding on board with Henk Kicks. Thailand-based Dutchman accelerating, accelerating now onto the brakes, turning into turn one in his great-looking orangey yellow and black Audi from Be Quick Racing. Slight kink coming up ahead of him. You can't quite see the hairpin over the, quite, the brow you can. Here comes the kink, slightly to the left, and there is turn three up ahead. Don't hit the brakes, don't hit the brakes. Think about the brakes, go for the brakes. At the moment, Hanks is down in 18th position. Let's see if he can improve this time around. He uh, very close to his best, so he's uh, pretty much on the money at the moment. But that target time, still 1 minute 35.692. You always expect the 888 Mercedes to be up at the front end of the field, and suddenly it looks so car 88 is going to be delivering this time around. It's uh, Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim at the moment, and good enough to go top one minute. 1 minute 35.5 seconds, a tenth of a second clear of the pack. So it's now Mercedes ahead of Porsche. We've got uh, three and three quarter minutes still on the clock. Where is the response coming from? It was all about biding time, getting back up there. Vujikorn in through Fuvasak has now done a lap within the bounds of the circuit. He goes up into third place. Jing Long Bao still in second place, but it's Abu, Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim at the moment who's uh, chosen the moment to go top, and he's improving yet more. What's he got up ahead of him? Oh, he's got a fair bit of traffic up ahead of him. That may not be a help. Over the ridge, down into turn four. I think he should be OK. Can he improve in the second of the three timing sectors? Just waiting to see. But that margin, well, it's come down because uh, we've now got a new challenger in second place. It's car number 29, Phantom Pro Racing. They brought their two Audis from China. And a very, very good lap from Kang Ling goes into second place. Just 0 0.122 of a second down on Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim. But it's Mercedes from Audi from Porsche at the moment. Traffic everywhere the eye can see around the circuit. Some will be tripping up a little bit. And certainly Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim got a little bit caught out there. His second sector not as good as his first and riding on board with the number 15 BMW. Kevin Chen having to weave around and he's uh, back off his best in the first sector. Traffic off his best in the second sector. He's about to start another lap. He's got time, two and a half minutes remain. Over the start, finish straight. But for Kevin Chen in the number 15 BMW, at the moment he's 13th, but now he's got what he's looking for. He's got clear space in front of him. Into turn one. Don't use too much curb on the inside. It pushes you wide. Up the straight and the great news for Kevin is up ahead of him. All is clear. Exactly what he wants at this late stage driver from Taipei. He's worked this session very well indeed, but uh, what's the target? Still 1 minute 35.5 seconds. The best he managed It's 1.3 seconds down on that. This lap should be an improvement though. And another better lap coming in from Vuthigorn into the Fuvasak. Car number 911 from AAS Motorsport. There it is. It's white and it's red. It's only good for third. Just he needs to find three thousandths of a second. That's all. And he could move ahead of number 29, the one that charged in recently, the Phantom Pro Racing Audi of Kang Ling. Don't forget, of course, uh, while we are waiting for, the sec for this session to come to a conclusion and see who takes pole, already the drivers who are going to be doing the second qualifying session, suited and booted in the pit lane, getting ready to go. And that was Lucas Stoltz, very, very talented driver who's going to be showing what he can do in the second session. Vutikorn in through Fuvasak, been a winner here before. He won in 2019, the second of the two racing sharing races here, sharing with uh, Alexander Imperatori. This time around, his teammate is Alessio Picariello. He chooses his teammates mates very well indeed. Into the final minutes of qualifying, where are the changes coming from? Is that target time of 1 minute 35.538 seconds going to stand? At the moment, it's looking fairly good because the improvements are coming from drivers lower down the charts, people trying to find their form. Now, this is the, one of the two local teams here, 114 YK, YYK Motorsports with their Mercedes oh, being very kind, keeping out of the way there. Sunoco sponsorship on there, another car with a great racing livery, must be said. Back on board, car number 15, the BMW, Kevin Chen at the wheel. Uh, we've got a spinner, the number 11, Audi going for a loop there. That's Andrew Harrianto. He was down in seventh place. He was only seven tenths off 
the pace, but uh, around he goes. Out comes the chequered flag at the end of the session. There, well, he just lost his last lap. That's the final corner. He just ran wide over the curbs, looped it round. Andrew Harrianto is going to park up just out of play. That car's crabbing a little bit. Oh, yes, the left rear wheel. So I presume he's hit. Uh, no, it's not my eyes deceiving me. That left rear wheel is out of kilter, probably broken a toe link. So I presume there was some contact with the barriers. Can't see any bodywork damage, but what it does mean that any car out on its final lap hasn't got a great deal of time left to get to the finish. But it's Abu Bakr, Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim at the top. One minute, 35.538 seconds. Any late finishers? Still waiting for the last few to come through. Not too much green on the screen. That means green on the screen means there are people improving in each of the sectors or any of the sectors. Interesting, some of the drivers, including uh, Jing Su Sun, who had been top of the charts fleetingly, such was the pace as it came on late in the session that uh, they've fallen down. And in, in the case of the number 13 Audi, we're looking at uh, for Jing Su Sun, that has fallen down to eighth place. And doesn't look as though he's going to find any improvements on this final lap. As I say, that someone moved past him. And he's fallen to ninth place. He will not be improving. Yes, the car that went up the order quite late on was car number 87, RB Racing, one of the Chinese crews uh, with Bo Yuan at the wheel. That moved up into fifth place. So good run late on. And of course, the teams have to do it all over again. They want their cars back in the pit lane as soon as they possibly can. There's only a seven minute gap between the end of this first session. That's when the chequered flag falls, not when the cars get back to the pit lane. So an interesting session now. I would reckon the times in the second session should be faster. We've got some of the, the big guns coming out to play, but also just a little bit of rubber down on the circuit to help them. Everything, as I said, white clean with very, very heavy rain uh, during yesterday's sessions, particularly the section of the track from turn four to turn five, and then again down to the final corner, turn 12. They were underwater, so clearly no rubber down. The drivers like the rubber down. It just, as long as it's on the racing line, just gives them that extra little bit of grip. But uh, job very well done in that first qualifying session. Pole for this afternoon's race. For number 88, one of the two Mercedes from Triple Eight JMR, and it's Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim who takes the prize. Looking down into the pit lane, some great looking new race liveries. R&B Racing, you can see that metallic purple on the nose of one of their two Porsches. And that uh, was Wei Lu, he qualified mid-grid. He qualified 12th out of the 24 runners. A good, solid job from Wei. And he's down just a whisker over a second down on that brilliant lap from Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim in that number 88 Mercedes. So just to run down the order again, Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim, the number 88 Mercedes from Triple Eight JMR, second fastest. Car number 29, Phantom Pro Racing, Kang Ling. And that was in the Audi, third fastest. Futicorn in through Fuversack, waving the flag, flag for Thailand, his AS Motorsport by Absolute Racing Porsche. So good mix of manufacturers, great mix of nationalities. And uh, very, very close indeed. The top 11 positions uh, covered by one second. So that's very, very competitive. I would reckon this next session is going to be faster still. You can hear the work down the pit lane. Fresh sets of rubber going on for the second qualifying session. And again, a little bit of talk back from one, driver one to driver two to tell them where the grip is coming or where the grip's still missing. That's always the important element. But uh, the track could not be more different to yesterday. And for a lot of the drivers who've raced here before, the chances are it was probably four years ago because it was the last time we visited the Chang International Circuit. And uh, certainly very, very popular uh, in use within Thailand as well. Their, their Super Series uh, grows and grows, and it's great to have the cross-pollination of the two. But uh, just to reiterate, the Fanacek GT World Challenge Asia, powered by AWS, is going places in 2023. We bounced back in 2022, back on the calendar after two years away because of the pandemic. But uh, it's growth and it's big time. But uh, first uh, voting rights cast through by Triple Eight JMR, the 88 crew, and Abu Bakar Ibrahim, Prince of Johor. He's handed the, the baton over to his teammate, Lucas Stoltz. There, he was fastest in session number one. 
and it was by uh, 0.122 of a second. Not much, but it's uh, quite enough just to be going on with because that's pole position to him. Second fastest, and it was uh, car number 29. One of two Phantom Pro Racing Audis and Lin Kang at the top of the chart from their team in second place. Just one-tenth of a second down on that pole time here at Buriram in Thailand. And the leading Thai driver, Vuthikorn in Fuvasak, third fastest. Uh, and that's a car that uh, has got a very, very strong driver pairing because Alessio Picariello, who knows these circuits very well, will be picking up for se session number two. That's AAS Motorsports by Absolute Racing with their Porsche. So it's Mercedes, Audi, Porsche, great mix at the top. Uh, fourth fastest. And it's the car with the largest number. It's car 992, fleetingly at the top. Bao Jing Long was the driver to start with. And Alexander Imperatori will be doing the next qualifying session in that red and gold Porsche. Quite a few of the drivers here because the session chopped and changed. Had a time at the top and the car that ended up down in fifth position, R&B Racing, car, the, the, uh, one of the Porsches from that Chinese crew, and Bo Yuan was good for fifth fastest. He was fleetingly top. Craft Bamboo, the red and yellow Mercedes. Car number 37, Anthony Liu, likewise had a spell at the very top. And again, another new Chinese team, Climax Racing here. Uh, and it was their number two car that was good for seventh position overall. That uh, was Zhu Bishuang. So uh, a real mix of drivers, nationalities, manufacturers. And I tell you what, we've got four manufacturers in GT3 here. Wait until we get to the Japan Cup races when we're promised that many times over, more of which later. But uh, certainly this is a good toe in the water with 25 cars here at the Chang International Circuit. And when we get to the next round uh, in Japan, we're believing, well, we're not believing, there will be 40 cars, 40 cars, and many, many other manufacturers coming out to play. And GT4 as well, of course. Temperature continues to rise here inland in Thailand. The clouds, though, they can stay high in the sky. We'll take that. We'll take the dry circuit. And session number two is about to begin. It comes thick and it comes fast. And air temperature's gone up not quite a full degree since the start of session one. Uh, track temperature, well, that's gone up four degrees. So things are changing fast. So temperature in the track is good if it's cold, but if it's already hot, you don't want a great deal more. However, this is just qualifying. 15 minutes, quick fire. They're already out on the track. Now, think back to the start of qualifying session number one. We had a huge tra train of cars waiting to go out. This time around, some of the teams have reacted that little bit faster uh, to get the car on the track. And 911 is the one we're looking at now, going through the kink at turn. Number two, down to the hairpin at turn three. It's AAS Motorsport by Absolute Racing. We've already had them third fastest in qualifying for race one. Now Alessio Picariello has got a couple of cars ahead of him, but he's got pretty much clear track. And I certainly fancy, fancy him as one of, one of the challengers, but uh, maybe by dint of the fact their garage is almost closest to pit exit, uh, Triple Eight JMR have got their car first in the line. That might be very useful indeed. And it will be Brock Feeney, very quickly rising Australian youngster, and he is at the wheel of that. He's sharing with uh, Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim. So the two princes of Johor, Prince Abu Bakr and Prince Jeffrey, running here this weekend and throughout the championship and certainly drawing a lot of interest with their cars. They also race in uh, GT World Challenge Australia, so it's a very, very busy team. But uh, in terms of finding space on the track, finding space to go and play, they worked a blinder getting the triple eight Mercedes out first. It, that Mercedes engine though is such a rumble across the start finish line. Now Alessio Picariello done a lot of his racing in, in Southeast Asia. Belgian by birth, and you can tell obviously Italian by surname. And Picariello is one of the drivers who'll be uh, hot footing from here over to Nürburgring for next weekend's 24 hour race around the full Nordschleife. Again, he's worked the track very well. Tucked in behind is EBM Giga Racing with another Porsche. It's the red and black one, and that should be Reed Harker at the wheel of that, the young Kiwi. First race of the championship, first race in which we can get a look at the cars. Some great new liveries, very crisp. The red and white AAS Motorsport colours there. And Vuthikon in from Fuvasak, the tie driver, will be watching on with interest. He ran very well indeed to be third fastest in session number one. First car on the track, Brock Feeney rumbling his way around the circuit. 
triple eight. He'll be the first one to set a flying lap. 20 year old from the Gold Coast in Australia. He really has stepped up to GT3 very, very comfortably indeed. Flew at Bathurst earlier in the year. Right, let's remind ourselves the target time. It took quite a long time into the last session. It was about four flying laps before we had the quickest time put on the board. One minute 35.5 seconds is the best in session one. The track temperature is higher, air temperature slightly higher, but the important thing for the drivers right now is there is much more rubber going down on every single corner, on every single lap. They need that rubber. Oh, and it's worked indeed. One minute 35.079 seconds as a first offering. That's fantastic from Brock Feeney. Half a second nearly faster than the very fastest lap in session one. Mikkel Mack goes up to second now. One of the BMW Works drivers is here this weekend, or several of them, Jens Klingman and his... Uh, the sister car from GH Team AAI has got Jesse Krohn in it. Oh, the German not quite finding the apex there down at turn, turn three. Was there someone up the inside? You can actually see in the onboard shot, you can see cars coming in his mirror and he's backed off a little bit. Got it wrong, he's aborted this lap. So the first flying lap going slightly wrong there for Jens Klingman, but uh, he will be back to fight and get it nailed next time around. In fact, he's weaving all over the circuit. He obviously didn't have enough heat in the tyres, didn't perform as he wanted down into turn three needs to stop weaving when those two aquamarine phantom pro racing audis come up in the background but it's brock feeney setting the pace the treble eight mercedes triple eight mercedes sorry excuse me triple not treble and brock starting to come across a little bit of traffic but that was a very very promising first flying that mickle max second fastest just over a second down in the treble three which is one of those two aquamarine phantom pro racing audis but all eyes on the triple eight car one of the two triple eight cars but now he's got uh ishan Pires, the driver up from uh, sri lanka just in front of him and that's aborted the end of his lap so he's got to dive into the pits and talk to the crew but he's put that lap on the board one minute 35.079 seconds super super impressive look at the graphic he's over a second faster than Mikkel mack and alessio picari yellow nearly two seconds down in third place so not only was it a great lap the others may challenge that later in the session but it was like here's your first opportunity clear track and Brock Feeney absolutely delivered. As you can see, in behind, looking at those two Phantom Pro Racing Audis, the treble three is the one driven by Michael Mack. That's second fastest at the moment. But they've got traffic all around them. The sister car from Triple Eight, car number 88, is in the mire of all that traffic as well. So they're going to have to work clear spaces on the track. Michael Max down to third place because Brock Feeney's down to second place and that means Alessio Picaro Yellow has gone to the top. One minute 34.637 se seconds. So the Belgian driver found ooh, just the two seconds on his second flying lap. He obviously worked the traffic well and you know what, he's improving on this lap as well. But riding on board with Ichan Pires, he's fine. Riding the curves nicely, gently. It's great to have a Sri Lankan driver coming here to play. He's sharing with Henk Kicks. He's got nowhere to hide because we're riding on board with him and the uh, Be Quick Racing Audi. He's got the number 13 Audi from Audi Sport Asia team absolute up ahead. And that's being driven by Frankie Chang Kong Fu. So multiple winner in GT World Challenge Asia events. So he's got a very good person to learn from. 9-11, that's the car that's fastest. Alessio Picariello finding a lot of traffic up in front of him. It's the second of the Phantom Pro cars and it's... Uh, Kao Chui in his way, one of the Chinese drivers here, one of a dozen Chinese drivers, and he's not wanted to get out of the way, and in fact, almost unseating himself. And now, oh, there was a going around the outside of car number 15, which is Jens Klingman, who's still not happy with his grip, with his anything. He's down in 19th, no, I'll call that 21st position at the moment. Time still on the board, just under eight minutes to go, and if you've had your lap rather ruined by traffic, you can do two things, call in and tell your pits about it, and your crew or stay out on the circuit. Again, riding with Ishan Pires, getting a look around this 12-turn circuit. And just for reference, Ishan is down in 19th position in the Be Quick Racing Audi. But he's improving with each lap. At the moment, he's uh, oh, a fair distance off the ultimate pace, but he's going faster, that's all that can be asked. But it's still the ultimate pace held by Alessio Picariello, the number 911 AAS Motorsport Porsche. Bear in mind, that was third in the first race. Now, German racer Fabian Schiller on board the lurid red and yellow and black number 37 Mercedes 
And that's Kraft 1 of Kraft Bamboo's two car. He's sharing that with uh, Anthony Liu and Fabian Schiller looking to find his way up the order at the moment. He's not at the sharp end of the field. That's still 1 minute 34.6 seconds. But Dennis Olsen, uh, semi-works Porsche driver, car number four, has moved up to second place. That's R&B Racing, one of the new Chinese teams. He's just two tenths of us, nearly three tenths down on Picariello. Now, Fabian Schiller, is he improving? Yes, he's improving. Is he fastest of all? Most certainly he is. 1 minute 34.099 seconds. That is a very quick lap, fastest by just over half a second from Alessio Picariello. Bit of traffic in front of Ishan Pires there, got very close to the tail of Frankie Chen Kong Fu. We're still waiting for a good lap from Frankie. He's down in 19th place and a problem for the locally entered YK Motorsports BBR by Sonoka. That's quite a mouthful, that's the name of the team. Their Mercedes pulling to the side, so real disappointment for Passerit prompts on back, but less disappointment because he's got it hooked up and going again. Oh, you know, to run out of ground. Oh, uh, home ground and uh, not be able to do your lap but at the moment Promson Bat is down in 18th position five seconds off the ultimate pace Fabian Schiller fastest number 37 Mercedes Craft Bamboo Racing looking at number 88 and at the moment still waiting for a really quick time from Lucas Stoltz but uh, if you look at his career history it's just rich rich in success if he doesn't win something he's almost always on the podium oh breaking super late just waiting for the front end of that car to turn in but uh, in terms of drivers in the world ranking who race Mercedes if you're looking at the top five duh, definitely Lucas Stoltz is in that but at the moment still waiting to deliver Alessio Picariello now fastest, not by a tenth of a second anymore. He's now only by 45 hundredths of a second, but there's a challenge coming from the driver of car number 15. We're riding on board with Jens Klingman. He smashed the first sector time of the three. Every lap of an international circuit is split into three different timing sectors, and it's going to be a massive charge from Jens Klingman. He's moved up to eighth place, but this lap is way, way faster. Not too many turns to go for Jens in the number 15. GH Team AAI BMW working his way through the final few sweepers coming down towards Grandstand, you can see in the background, is to the right of your screen. Right in front of him is turn number 12, the last corner of this 12 laps, 12 corner circuit. Over the curbs a little bit, shifting a little bit wide in the BMW M4, foot absolutely planted. I don't think he's going to stay, he's fallen to 10th, but when he completes the lap, bang, is that going to be good for the fastest time of the lot? No, it's brilliant in the middle sector, in the first sector, but good only to stay in tenth. He's uh, five tenths of a second, six tenths of a second off the pace. It's super, super close. And now at the top of the charts is car number 87. It's uh, one of the two R&B racing Porsches. And it's Leo Yi, one minute 34.526 seconds. He's a tenth of a second faster than Alessio Picariello. You can be sure with four minutes remaining that BMW will be riding on board with Jens Klingman will improve and you know what he's already done that he's worked his corner he's done the fastest first sector of anyone so just remember at the moment here we are the minutes are counting down four minutes to go and it's uh, Leo Yi top in the in the green R&B racing Porsche but one that's always challenging the one second fastest the 911 Porsche from AAS Motorsport Alessio Picariello this lap won't be the one he's worked the pay he's got the clear track ahead of him he's uh, that best lap actually it was an improvement but we are talking hundreds he didn't improve in any of the sectors but his average across all three was better than he'd done before but then Fabian Schiller goes top the red and yellow craft bamboo racing Mercedes is now fastest, Fabian Schiller. Brock Feeney is back on the track. Remember, he did that first flying lap and went top. He's now reported to the pits, found out what he wanted, got maybe a slight setup change. He's second fastest. The times, we may get a lap in the 1 minute 33. It's the ultimate record, race record, 1 minute 33.055. There was never going to be enough rubber down. Now, what's happening for Ishan Pires? He's down in... Not he's improving on time. He's just gone in third fastest time. They'll be delighted at Be Quick Racing. Wow, this young... You can see why Audi have got this young Sri Lankan on the books. He was down outside the top 15, then bang, into third place. Just 0 0.073, 73 thousands of a second away from taking pole. He's smiling in the graphic there. He'll be smiling a whole lot more as he gets very, very close to Mercedes down into the turn for three hairpin. Brock Feeney, fastest a lot now by 42 thousandths of a second in the treble, in the 888 from 888 Racing. So at the moment, their cars are first and looking for 88. That's down, way down for Lucas Stoltz, 21st out of 24th. But, you know, you can be sure that Lucas Stoltz is the sort of driver who may just wait until the final lap and then really deliver. But at the moment, that car 
not quite working, but for Australian racer Brock Feeney, his is absolutely nailing it. 1 minute 34.4, but that's not good enough because Alessio Picariello has responded. As I said, the Belgian driver made space for himself. He was third fastest, second fastest. He's now fastest, 34, 1 minute 34.134. But the fight back is for Brock Feeney. Is Brock Feeney going to... No, he's not going to topple him. He topples Fabian Schiller to go into second place, separated by two tenths of a second. But it's the 9-11 from AAS Motorsport, from Alessio Picariello, that is setting the pace. 1 minute 34.134 seconds. The second fastest, and he's now Banksy Goods. The times are changing almost faster than the screens can catch up. So Craft Bamboo Racing go into second place. And Brock Feeney down to third we're looking Porsche Mercedes 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 bit of a pattern here and the car currently in fifth it's a Porsche R&B racing and it's uh, Leo Yi Hong Lee Jens Klingman still looking for a quick time he was 10th with a good lap but he's again super fast in the first timing split but he's good only for 14th place at the moment when and where is the time going to come from just a minute remains Ishan Pires got up into third place and with those quick laps coming in just as soon as he set his time, he's down into seventh place. Now we're back on, on board with Jens Klingman. Everybody looking for a gap in the traffic, everyone looking to lean on it and for a lot of them this will be their last lap. Some of them will get round to get one more flyer. Jens Klingman is one of that number. No, possibly not. We've got, what, 40 seconds left? Yeah, I might just scrape it going through turn five may just get round to get past the start-finish line before the chequered flag comes out. And another improvement from Alessio Picariello, 1 minute 34.022. He's been fast, he's been consistent, he's shaved a few thousandths off. He's now precisely a quarter of a second ahead of the number 77 Craft Bamboo Racing Mercedes. That's the pale blue one with Maxi Gertz at the wheel. You just don't know where to look at the moment. Well, let's ride on board with Jens Klingman. Again, will he get to the around the final corner in time? No, look, the graphic tells you, bang, no time left in the second. The chequered flag is out, so anything Jens Klingman's going to do is going to have to be on this lap. And I see no improved times there from him on the screen. No improvement, but his car, interestingly, is fast as the whole lot in the straight line through the VMAX uh, sector there. Timing gets it at 257.7 kph, but there's that chequered flag. Good for some of the drivers and frustrating for others. It's come out maybe before they wanted it, but it's Picariello from Gertz, from Stoltz at the moment. Brock Feeney down to fourth place, Fabian Schiller to fifth. Every single one of those drivers, apart from Gertz, had a time that at some stage was fastest on the charts. Any late improvements, you can be sure, about half the field, still got half a lap to go. That was a super fast lap, 1 minute 34.022 seconds from AAS Motorsport. That's the 911 Porsche run for them by Absolute Racing, sharing with Vutikon and Trafuvasak, who was uh, third fastest in session number one. So that would be a very, very good aggregate. But uh, traffic can be a bit of a hindrance to some of the drivers out on the circuit. Jens Klingman had a face full of Audi when he wanted to have a line, clear line of sight. But you know what? Jens is a very, very tough racer and uh, give him the race over the qualifying and I'm sure he's going to deliver big time. But right at the end, well, that was a cracking, cracking, cracking session there, Q2 and bragging rights. And interestingly, a time, as I said, much more rubber down on the circuit. Uh, one and a half seconds faster than qualifying session number one. His margin precisely a quarter of a second to the good over the number 77 Craft Bamboo Racing entry, the Mercedes of Maxi Gertz. And right at the end, Lucas Stoltz does what he does and uh, slotted into third place in the, well, in fact, Triple Eight Racing. They've got uh, cars in second, in third and fourth because Lucas Stoltz stole past Brock Feeney. And unfortunately, we've got uh, one of the Porsches not quite made it back in. I'm sure if I lean out of my window, which I won't do, um, that's sitting on a curb halfway around the circuit. So pretty much everybody's taken the chequered flag. Just waiting for the last few to pour in. I think that's Reed Harker's car, car number. Yeah, it is, car number eight that was stuck out on the circuit. But uh, anyhow, that uh, delivered fairly well there. Two cars stopped out on the circuit. Uh, stop and you'll have a friend. The one with the, the red Porsche in front is Reed Harker's car, entered by EBM Giga Racing. That's Earl Bamba Motorsport Giga Racing. And the blue Audi looks at it. Would that be car number 13? Quite possibly, just seeing if that made it back around. 
because that uh, is a blue Audi. Uh, Frankie Chen Kong Fu, no, he's made it back to the pit, so it's not his. I've accused the wrong car of being stopped out on the circuit there. But what a great session, chopping and changing. Times are going backwards and forwards. And uh, again, just showing the value of extra laps on the circuit, extra rubber being put down uh, for all of the drivers there. It's getting faster and faster. And for a lot of them, they have the frustrations of their cars being, you know, a wet session is useful if it's uniformly wet, but yesterday's sessions became so wet they had to be red flagged because the track was flooded in places. But uh, most notably at the section we're looking at here, the, the final corner onto the start finish straight, turn number 12 was underwater. So today it's drying and it will dry fast in these warm conditions. Humidity actually slightly uh, falling away now, which is good. But let's take a look at the charts at the end. Vutikorn in Trafuvasak was third fastest in the AAS Motorsport number 911 Porsche. That was in session one. Session number two, Alessio Picario picked up the baton and went running with it and set the fastest time of all. Late, late challenge from Craft Bamboo Racing with both their 37 and 77 Mercedes, but it was uh, Maxi Gertz who delivered to take second fastest time, uh, while the sister car with Fabian Schiller down in fifth overall. But look at the mix of cars. It's Porsche and then five Mercedes filling the top six positions. Dennis Lind, the champion in the series uh, back in 2018. Uh, good for sixth place. He's sharing the number two Climax Racing Mercedes from the new, well, new to us uh, Climax Racing team. Great to have these Chinese teams coming to play. Brock Feeney and Lucas Stoltz taking third and fourth positions for triple eight JMR. So Mercedes looking very, very handy around here. But a performance I want to pick out there is uh, Ishan Pires, the driver from Sri Lanka, fantastic to get in the top 10 is phenomenal to get up to eighth position and just half a second down on the ultimate pace was a brilliant brilliant run so a lot to comment on because the highlights are here now and the drivers were keen very keen indeed to go out for session number one 24 cars going out to play on a circuit of 4.55 kilometers. And it was about making space. First of all, you get heat in your tires, then you get space on the circuit. Don't want to be tripped up by someone else. And Vuthikon in Trafuvasak was looking very handy indeed early on, but they were looking for grip. Washed, washed off the circuit was all the rubber from former running by heavy rain yesterday. And it was about being slightly patient, waiting, getting space. Is there enough grip in my tire? How hard can I attack each of the corners? And uh, certainly Treble 8 was pushing on very hard indeed with uh, Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim. But caution was required. So easy to run out over the curves. Quite a few of the drivers exceeding the lines on the outside of the circuit and their best laps being taken away from them. So they had to be running at sort of 99%, not 100%. Bear in mind, it was only a 15-minute qualifying session and a bit of patience there from Vutikon and Fufu for Sack. Stuck behind one of the Phantom Pro Racing Audis and uh, waiting and just hoping that space would open up in front of him. Craft Bamboo Racing, bright yellow and red entry from Anthony Liu, was one of the quicker drivers in the session, working his way very well around the circuit here. It's about getting a flow through the twists and the turns, and then very, very close indeed uh, in front of the Be Quick Racing Audi. And then finding a car, that was the local YK Motorsports Mercedes, stopped and then eventually going again at the side of the circuit. That luckily got back to the pits, went out to fight another day. And again, both of the Triple Eight racing Mercedes uh, looking very, very impressive. And Brock Feeney really hopped out and uh, laid down a marker at the start of Q2. First challenge, first flying lap, bam, put one on the board. It took a lot of the other crews a long time to get back from that and uh, work up to speed, but uh, then down in the pits, just busy, busy. All the crews just uh, working on their cars between session one and session two. But it's all about mastering the conditions here. Hot, humid, very little grip indeed. Of course, we've got GT4 qualifying ahead of us. But the good thing for all the teams and drivers is the clouds are there and they haven't dropped rain on the circuit as yet today. We'll keep it that way if we possibly can. There's enough to learn here at the Chang International Circuit for all of these drivers because, uh, again, it's a technical circuit. You can attack it, but if you attack it too hard, you can come unstuck. And the drivers all know that. Remarkably few, few problems in that session. A few cars running wide, a few cars having little technical issues. Um, but uh, the good thing is the drivers largely kept it on the black stuff, which is exactly what is required. 
I do, I'm very much a fan of this quick fire qualifying session, just those seven minutes between the end of the first session, the start of the second session. So the crew's really needing to be on their toes. The next car that we've got, it's the GT4 qualifying. And we've got a fabulous looking uh, entry from Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia. And it should be Harry Dharma Monopo going out in that. These really wieldy cars in GT4, different from GT3, smaller wings, and many other considerations as well. They, they look like a halfway step, but I tell you what, the Supra has always looked really, really good in GT4 competition. And around the world, GT3 was the formula that really took off and uh, put GT racing back on a solid footing on a global stage with the various GT World challenges around the globe. But GT4, the subclass, is the, is the one that's had the fastest growth in re recent years and looking forward to greeting many more GT4 runners to come and play with us uh, around Southeast Asia because their cars are great and the numbers in, in Europe in particular have gone through the roof. And it certainly brings a lot of people join GT4, get to grips with that and go, you know what's next? I know what's next, GT3. And that's the glory about motor racing. If the former is right, people will step up the, according to budget, to talent, to desire. And uh, again, great competition in these various categories around the world. So just to, to let you know that Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia waving the GT4 flag here. And again, it's about, uh, well, traffic shouldn't be a problem in this session, but uh, it's about keeping it clean, tidy and doing what you can do. Of course, the target time isn't the fastest time we had in Q2 from the GT3s because that was one minute 34. But uh, we know a GT4 driven very well will be about a dozen seconds, maybe slightly more than that away from the GT3 pace. But that's exactly where they should be. Air, con air temperature continuing to go up a little bit, half a degree higher than it was at the start of Q2 for the GT3 runners. Uh, and good news is, but it's only small news, is the fact that uh, humidity has fallen slightly. Take a look at the circuit again. It's a, a quickish right-hander at the end of the start-finish straight. Long run with a kink up to the hairpin at turn three, over a rise to turn four, four, five, six, seven, around a lake, then up over, over rise, dropping down into turn eight, turn nine, slight climb to turn 10, and then the fast run down to the heavy braking point at turn 12 at the end of this four and a half kilometer circuit. 1 minute 44.8, the fastest ever lap from a GT4 runner here. That was back in 2018. That was the second of our three visits before this time uh, to the circuit here at Buriram. An hour's flight north of Bangkok here in Thailand. And it's a circuit that's getting more and more usage outside the main entrance. There's a drag strip, there's a football stadium. But really what we're looking at this year in the Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia is a six race championship. We kick off here in Thailand. Many a year in the past, we've kicked off at Sepang in Malaysia. But then we move to four races in Japan before ending up for novelty's purpose at Sepang. Let's take a look at... Off we go. So, GT4 qualifying about to get underway. And just to finish my thought there, we go from here to four races in Japan and we end rather than start at Sepang in Malaysia. There's the calendar for you. And we've got the Japan Cup, which is for the four Japanese rounds ahead of us as well as a sub championship. We also have a China Cup because we've got so many new Chinese teams coming to play in Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia that uh, we've got a special cup across all six rounds of the championship. And we've got four crews here this weekend doing all of those. Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia, Harry Dharma Manopu. Out on the circuit, got it all to himself, but it's about keeping it neat and tidy. These are very, very different cars to GT3 to drive. And you know what? A lot of drivers think you, you've got uh, less downforces. <laughs> it might be easier. It's, it's actually very, very critical because if it's like there's less grunt with these cars and therefore if you lose your momentum, it can really uh, fall away from you. But uh, for the Indonesian racer at the wheel, Haridama Monopo. He's sharing with a Japanese racer, Nonaka Seita. So Nonaka will do the second uh, session. Long-time racer. was competing in Asian Formula Renault all the way back in 2006. But really, this is a, a step up. And just a chance to learn a new circuit. Drivers always like to get uh, something different under their wheels. Keep it neat, keep it tidy. You can see the car gets unsettled when it hits the kerbs 
on the inside of the corners. So turns eight and nine negotiated. Here we are, turn ten. Slight rise over the curve on the oh, bouncing off the curve on the inside. So no, not to do that next lap. But that's fine. This is the out lap. But the out lap should be all about getting heat in your tyres. So Nonaka, sorry, Har Haridamo Monopo. This would be watched from the pits by his teammate Nonaka Saita. Just seeing, learning. You can take two laps to put the heat in your tyres if there's no one around you, and you're just going to bide your time. This is sensible when you're. Running, he's running in the GT4 Silver Am class. Far less dramatic to look at than the GT3s, but uh, good cars to drive. And certainly among the GT4s around the world, this Supra looks really, really dynamic. Of course, they all have different performance advantages, but they're all balanced out by balanced performance. So at some points on a track, let's say a GT4 Aston Martin might be faster than the Toyota Supra or a Mercedes AMG or a BMW M4, many, many uh, manufacturers in the in the mix, but all their performances balanced so that ideally you can hop in any car from any make if the ba ba balanced performance has been conducted well and SRO. The organizers have a very, very good handle on this. You should be able to set an equal time. Turns four, five, and six. You can see they're going around the late lane. Let's ride on board with uh, Harry Dharma. This is a driver's eye view. You can see working hard around the lap. The corners come thick and fast. This is uh, out of turn seven into turn eight. Again, you use the curbs. A nice flat curb on the exit there into turn nine. Just needs a bit more heat in those tyres. That will be coming over the next lap or so. Now, you see he ran a little bit deep there and then was compromised for turn 10, was turning in from a tighter angle. This is better through turn 11, but that will have cost him because, of course, if you're not as fast as you can be onto some of the straights, this is the straight down to turn 12. It's going to hurt you. Right, in your mind, if you've made a mistake, you just get it clean out of the final corner and then accelerate hard, little twitch over the curves. That's absolutely fine. First uh, lap on the board, 1 minute 48.2 seconds, and I expect all the times to improve from that. There were a couple of little little slides here or there, but uh, that's fine. 10 minutes left in this 15-minute session, so it's about put your banker lap in. That's it at 1 minute 28, sorry, 48.2. And then the long run. Turn two is almost not a corner. There it is, a little kink to the left, but it's about positioning and getting the braking right into turn, th turn three, the, the, the main hairpin on the circuit neat tidy trying to get close to the apex but it's quite a wide hairpin so you can afford to run the wider line over the curbing on the exit that's good very good indeed now this is the second longest uh, straight on the circuit from turn three over a slight rise and then you're arriving at the section of the lap around the circ around the lake and past the lake he goes and turn four along this flank of the lake past the pits running parallel pretty much with the pit straight into turn five Nice wide expanse out ahead of the drivers. There's tarmac runoff area, then gravel traps beyond. Don't want to go out to the gravel traps. Turn six, negotiated. Turn seven, now into a slight compression up over the rise. That's much, much better uh, from Harry Dharma there. From Harry Dharma Monopo. And again, the section a lot of drivers lose out actually is in that uh, turns eight, nine, and ten combination. There's nine running a little bit wide and again compromised on turn ten. Maybe if he can slightly t take a slightly different line into turn nine. But then again, he's the driver at the wheel. He's got the feel of the, the heat in the tyres. It's all coming to him, that feeling through the steering wheel. Out of turn 11, down the short straight. And all your time on the short straight down to turn 12 is thinking about my braking point, my braking point. But that's neat, that's tidy. And he's going to take, well, by the looks of things, about three, two and a half, three seconds off his previous best lap. He takes yeah, two and a bit seconds. So he's down to 1 minute 46.597 seconds. That's good. Bear in mind the lap record for class is 1 minute 44.8. So that's a very impressive second flying lap. He's certainly the Indonesian racer getting to grips with the circuit here very, very well indeed. But whatever you do on one flying lap, you've got to be thinking each lap you need to go that little bit faster. Breaking hard for turn three. As I said, a wide hairpin taking that wider exit line. If it was tighter, he'd have had to take a tighter one. Now, here we have an onboard lap. So here we are, the Chang International Circuit, Buriram, uh, approaching turn one. This is quite a high speed third gear corner. You want to use a lot of entry curb and uh, mid corner curb. Track limit is a big thing here, you, you see, because it's a motorcycle track. You can really use a lot of 
the uh, runoff areas, but the, uh, the race control is not going to be happy. There's a bit of a middle straight here before approaching the turn three hairpin. It's actually a turn two, but somehow they, they made this little kink in the turn, turn two. Important to get a good exit here. Again, uh, let the car flow out of the corner early on power. Then this next one is going to be very high commitment, left-hander. Uh, normally in a quali run, it's going to be something like 230 kph minimum. This is just a brake matching run uh, early on in the day. So slightly less speed here. Again, you want to you want to be accurate with your curbs usage here because it does a lot of lap time to be gained. Uh, high commitment S's again. Track limits an issue here normally in the exit of turn seven. Another third gear corner. Use the inside curb, let the car flow out. And this is a tricky one. A long, long right-hander before S's. So this is important to get early on the power. Let the car flow out. This is all flat. Then you approach the last corner next to the long lift, the king sign. Break up, break 100 meters. Use fully the inside curb. Let the car flow out of the last corner. It's a lap of free run. So there you go. Good to be taken around by an expert. And again, just the little comments from a driver just add so much about their feel. And I, I love the one just um, just balancing the brakes on this lap. And just you know the tenth of a second that uh, normal souls would would lose. They just have everything under command. And uh, the pace from Harry Damo Monopo continues to improve. One minute forty four point nine seconds. He's within a just over a tenth of a second away from the lap record. So it shows how GT4 has moved on since that record was set five years ago on our visit in 2018. Riding on board with the Indonesian racer. And that's the tricky sector of the circuit that we just heard described on board with the onboard lap from the BMW. And uh, the Toyota driver actually is looking much more effective through there. His middle sector wasn't so brilliant, though. So maybe just before that corner, he lost a bit of time. But look, we're dealing thousands of a second faster than his previous first sector by 38 hundreds, and then slower by 48 thousandths in the second one. And then lost a bit of time in that final sector. So do it all over again. Just under five minutes remain in this uh, first qualifying session. His teammate, Nonaka Saito, will take over the... Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia number 39, the, the glorious looking Supra, running in those traditional Toyota Gazoo Racing red, wh red, white and black livery. And always for drivers, of course, they look at their sector times. What went wrong in that one? Look, he's lost a second in that first sector, but looking from the outside, don't know if he backed off a little bit, but uh, one presumes he did. So it could be, right, cool the tyres down a little bit. The session's still got time running. Coming back out of turn three, looks like it's running at a baited pace here. Doesn't look as though it's full GC4 pace. Let's take a look when he gets to the end of that second timing sector. But into turn four. Can't, drivers can't quite see over the barriers to the little infield lake. Into turn five, the stadium and the grandstand on the right-hand side. And again, it seems that there's so much space, but turn five and turn six are very close together. Here's turn six. It's about getting the car over to the right and then immediately over to the left. So he can turn into turn seven. And this is one of the corners where the drivers have been being pinged for going over the white line. If all four wheels to the left of that white line at the marking the edge of the circuit, your, your lap is taken away from you. And so many good lap is ruined for drivers. But they want to be the racing drivers that they are, um, the ones that absolutely maximise their line. Yes, yeah, so it really was backing off seven seconds down there from Harry Dama Monopo. I think he probably thinks that uh, first qualifying session is run, unless he fancies uh, getting the car back up to speed again. But out of turn... 11, yeah, the car not looking so it's carrying the alacrity unless he's just trying to set it up. It's all about exit from the final corner. Is he going to go for one final flying lap with three minutes on the board or is he going to just enter the pit lane? And the answer is it's the latter of those options. And what that does do, very clever, is um, give his teammate, Nonaka Saito, the Japanese racer, a, a little more time before the second qualifying session for the GT4s begin. And that's uh, due to be at... Uh, 12.09 and it's uh, that's just over 10 under 10 minutes away so that's a uh, very kind of uh, Harry Dama Monopo he set a very good lap there one minute 44.9 seconds in the end that's a tenth of a second off the lap record but 
but that's GT4 and obviously that pace is some way down from the best lap from uh, GT3 qualifying which was set in the end by Alessio Picariello it's 10 seconds down on that pace that's GT4 versus GT3 but let's take a look at GT3 and here we have the interviews but, um, I tried my best out there I didn't know what position I was but yeah, happy to finish P1 you know the the weather has been a little bit unpredictable so far how, how has it been testing and then now going into the race well the whole testing was dry but in practice it was wet so it was two different conditions but luckily today is, is dry and also um so you you know are back from last season again and how does it feel to be racing here after all this time i've never raced here actually last year we, last year we didn't do it but um yeah we raced here in 2019 so it feels good to be back right. how does the car feel not too bad can be better amazing all right so what are you looking forward to at the race no uh, just finishing the race yeah that's all thank you all the best luck to you thank you well, that was a great lap in qualifying session. One for the GT3 runners and uh, Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim really getting stronger with every season. And that was a pole for session one. That's for this afternoon's race for Triple Eight JMR. And uh, I'm sure they'll be very proud down in Johor because uh, Prince Abu Bakar is getting faster pretty much every time he gets in the car, racing all around Asia and racing in the GT World Challenge Australia as well. So a, a packed program for him. And of course, for his brother, Prince Jeffrey, through 2023, which is exactly how racing drivers like it. Be busy, be quick, be busy. So the final GT4 qualifying session will be coming very soon indeed. But let's just refresh our minds. We're kicking off our championship in 2023 in Thailand. But let's look at the calendar for the rest of the season. Traditionally, we start in Sepang, but this year we're starting Chang International. Here we are the middle of May, but then we move to four races in a row to form the Japan Cup element. Fuji International Speedway, former home of the Japanese Grand Prix, hugely popular race uh, circuit for the driver's beautiful location just up uh, on the side hill, the foothills, if you will, of that iconic volcano. That's the middle of June. Second round, the current home of the Japanese Grand Prix, the Suzuka International Circuit, could not be more different, but a real driver's challenge. That is a month after the Fuji event in the middle of July. And then running with sort of month gaps, we move to Mategi up in uh, the northeast of Japan. And that will be a real challenge for all the drivers in the middle of July. And then Okayama International Circuit. We ended the 2022 championship there and really popular, tight, twisty, beautiful mountainside setting there in, in among the trees. That's in the middle of August. And then Sepang International Circuit to conclude on the 22nd to 24th of September. That's the 2023 challenge calendar for the Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia. But let's hear from the man who makes it all happen, from Benjamin Franasevici. All right, Benjamin, new season, new start. We are here at Chang International Circuit. Um, the last time we were here was 2019. How does it feel to be back? But it's, we've always had good grids here, and um, being back in Thailand is uh, always fun. We've got local teams here. It's the first race of the season, and it's going very well. We're, we're excited to be back. We have 25 cars on the grid. Correct. We have 25 cars. It's our first round. We expected to have 25 cars. We're a little bit above our expectation, which is always good. Uh, it's a good start to the scene and we knew that we were going to have a lot of cars in Fuji and that's the case We're going to have 40 cars in Fuji uh, next month and we're, it's a great start It's such a great thing to see this growth in this season and this year we have the China Cup Yes, we've been uh, Since uh, China opened up in December we had Chinese team calling us saying we want to be back so that's great news It's uh, we have a lot of Chinese drivers joining us already this year. We have uh, 12 drivers here. Maybe we'll have a bit more uh, from Fuji, but that's, um, it's, uh, it's great to have Chinese drivers back and new Chinese teams as well. And also, could you tell me about the plans for the GT4? So GT4 here is still growing and we're not quite happy yet. We're going to boost it. We have plans uh, second part of the year. We're going to introduce a new platform for GT4 cars to come and join us. But we'll tell you a little bit more about this during the season and, and from Fuji. So um, in the, to the near future, Fuji is up next with almost around 40 cars. Could you tell me about that? Well, that's going to be the biggest grid we've ever had. 
but uh, it also have a lot of quality. Uh, we've got, I think now, 12 manufacturers entered. So here we have four, and then we're going to have triple that. So that's great. Uh, local cars, the Lexus, the Nissan, and some Italian brands are back. So that's really exciting because no one else can claim to have so many different brands racing in GT World Challenge Asia. So, so that means we're the best. <laughs> Thank you very much. And today, for the race, what are you looking forward to? It's the opening race. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, some good racing, but I want everyone to stay calm, you know. I need to uh, relax and race control. I don't like. To, I, I don't want to stress out. Okay, good luck for this season. Thank you. Always good. Good to hear the thoughts of Benjamin. He's worked super, super hard over the winter, and so looking forward to having 40-plus runners when we head to Japan to Fuji. But right now, 25 runners here, and for a lot of the drivers, it's a chance to learn this circuit. Many have not raced here before, and it's an absolute gem here in Thailand. An hour's flight north of Bangkok, slightly longer if you take the car or the train, but uh, great to be here and uh, really, really the place does buzz. And we've got a classic car race supporting us this weekend as well, which is good to see uh, cars brought out from garages to uh, show their form. And certainly the fans enjoy those very much indeed. And there's great hubbub on the grid as well. I really do enjoy the racing here in Thailand. So what we're looking at now is the second driver who's going to take over the 39 Toyota Supra, the GT4 Car running in the Silveram class, Toyota Gazoo racing Indonesia's Supra. Looks fantastic. And it's Nonaka Seita. Now, it's a Japanese-Indonesian driver pairing, and uh, the Japanese driver about to have a go. Only 22 years old. Started in Japanese Formula 4. Did a bit of uh, Super GT, GT300, so sort of quite, quite similar to these. And uh, certainly a driver with quite a future in the sport, one would think. But let's see how he stacks up alongside the pace of one minute. 44.949 seconds, just a whisker off the outright lap record in GT4, set by his teammate, Harry Dharma Manopo. So he'll be on the track all on his own, so he can't blame traffic. That's one excuse removed from the driver's notebook of excuses. But right now, no excuses at all. The track is getting better and better after yesterday's very, very heavy rain. And uh, certainly for Nonaka, he'll just be going to take it carefully, build up to speed, and again... He doesn't have the downforce the GT3 runners have, but he has what he has, and he'll use it as well as he possibly can. But certainly, I would say his experience of competing in the GT300 category of the Super GT series in Japan will stand him in good, good stead. Maybe his single-seater days are behind him. This is very much the modern way. You know, cast, wind the clock back 10 years ago, everybody was running in single-seaters. Very rare to have a driver in a GT car who was under 30. Now we've got drivers who go directly to these from karting. They see a far, far greater career path to them because it's a very thin uh, pyramid, if you will, to get to the pinnacle in single-seaters. And there's many more of a career opportunity. And look, when we go to Japan for rounds two, three, four, and five of the GT World Challenge Asia, we're going to have 12 manufacturers running out on the circuit. That gives the possibility, when times come good, of 12 works manufacturers teams and we've certainly got uh, a number of works drivers here from the roster of Audi, Porsche and Mercedes manufacturer drivers and it's good to have them on board they love to come and race over here and also the AM driver who shares with them in the predominantly pro-AM lineups we have in GT World Challenge Asia they get to learn from that expertise and the, some of the mechanics and engineers are sent out from the various factories as well to pass on their knowledge of how to get the most out of their cars The GT3 runners are deep in their debriefs. Quick fire. This is going to be quick fire as well. It's only 15 minutes, but uh, driver one to driver two with seven minutes in between. Not much time to talk. And now's a chance to go, hey, we've got a dry circuit today. How's the handling? Where's the handling? Where are we losing it? Where are we gaining? And, you know, again, there is no place to hide with all the telemetry on these cars for all concern. You know, you can't say, oh, no, I was fine around the back of the circuit. I don't know what the problem is because the engineers can see precisely what the problem was. Look, you ran so far away from the apex here you break too late there and so on and so forth this session is due to kick in pretty much now 1209 the flag should be waved at pit exit the green flag there is the the hooter busy in the pit lane but only for the gt4 runner from toyota gazoo racing indonesia right off you go lollipop up the session already underway you could hear the hooter and the clock counts down but uh, with no traffic to contend with Nonata Seika can pick and choose not only when he goes on the circuit but also where he corners. Nobody to obstruct him. There is a green flag being waved at pit exit. 
going past the, the lower garages beyond the main grandstand building here, which is huge, by the way. Super impressed when I turn up. Past the ancillary garages towards the exit. There is pit out, and there's a reminder that you have to do no more than 50 kilometres an hour in the pits. You're allowed to go a little bit faster on the circuit. Step on it, Nanaka. So the Chang International Circuit, it rises, it falls, not an enormous amount, but much enough to make it very interesting indeed. One super long straight, that is down to turn three. The corner's being approached now by the Supra GT4. And Nanaka sweeps into it. It's a very broad hairpin, a bit, a bit sort of spoon-like. So he should know that from Suzuka with the spoon corner. And riding on four with the GT4. Super here with Nanaka Seita, driver moving from side to side to get some heat in the tyres. Over a slight brow here. There's the brow where the blue curving comes on the right-hand side, then down into turn four. Turns four, five and six. A series of left-hander, 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 right, which is turn number seven. This is turn five. And again, turn six comes very soon after that, just, going, just coming around turn six now. Curving on the left-hand side, wants to stay far over to the left as far as possible. Uh, damaging the tyres too much. Turn seven, a corner where quite a few drivers have been done for track limits. A lot of them learn, they see what happens in the first session and go, OK, let's wind it back in a little bit. Now, this is a really technical part. Turn eight into turn nine, one corner pretty much flows into the other. A lot of the drivers actually consider it almost as one corner. Then it comes up a slight rise, but that little S there is very tricky. Get that wrong and you've really rather made a mess of your lap. Again, over a slight brow, this is turn 11. Right-hander turning down the slope to turn 12. It's a short straight, but it still counts as a straight, but it's all about getting your braking right, because if you get it wrong, run too deep in the corner, you won't get the power down, and your next lap will be compromised as well as the one you've just wrecked. So, that was the out lap. And I think the first flying lap from uh, his Indonesian teammate, Harry Dharma Monopo, was 1 minute 48 something. The lap record was 1 minute 44.8. And certainly, Haridamo Monopo went faster and faster, 1 minute 46. And then that brilliant lap right at the end, 1 minute 44.949 seconds, just off the lap record pace. And that's very, very impressive indeed. So let's see, Nanoko, he sets the fastest time in this session, which is fair, because he's, he's the only car out on the track. GT4 all to himself. Certainly when we go to the rounds in Japan, the, the GT4 field will be boosted. And I feel very confident when we come here, at the start of next season or early next season, depending where it falls on the calendar, we'll have a lot more GT4 runners all over again because uh, certainly plenty of GT4 cars and interest in Thailand. Quite a few of the teams didn't quite get it hooked up for this year, but uh, they all want to come and play. You can be sure of that in the GT World Challenge Asia. Must say very impressed. Seita's very, very tidy around the circuit from outside the car. the entrance of the circuit. Now oh, he's on the homeward run. Neat, tidy, over the kerb on the inside at turn 11, down the slope to turn 12. Well, as we watch Nanaka Seita, we need to really hear from his teammate, Harry Dharma Monopo, who set a brilliant opening time. All right, so here in the box with Hari Dama, you just finished your Q um, qualifying. qualifying yes. How is the the conditions out there right now? Ah, the condition about the the track. Yeah, now uh, because I'm Muslim, I say Alhamdulillah because no rain, <laughs> so we can uh, get the uh, qualifying with the dry condition. Uh, not like uh, yesterday. Yesterday in practice is big, big rain, so it's hard to set up the car and not much many laps in the car. So today uh, I'm uh, I'm feel okay because uh, the track is uh, dry. Okay. So I'm sorry to distract you from watching the screen because I think <laughs> no you are very keen about what's happening on track. Um, how is the package with you and Nonaka? Okay, my packet. Uh, especially this is my first time. First time, uh, my, me and my team, uh, Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia, first time join uh, GT Asia Challenge, Award Asia Challenge. And for me, uh, 
still learning about the car and also about the uh, about the race. Uh, now uh, the race uh, with the two driver because in Indonesia I never race with two driver. And then uh, thanks to Nonakasan already many teaching me about how to drive because this is my second week drive uh, GT car. Uh, so uh, I need to learn and many learn. Uh, so hopefully uh, in this uh, in this race I get the many many experience for for to facing the next race. So from what I get from um, what you just said, as a rookie team and a rookie driver, I would say, what are you aiming towards this whole season? Uh, uh, I don't know about the... Because I heard about uh, the next race in Japan, our team uh, still get a waiting list because so many cars in the grid. So hopefully, first time hopefully we can join again in the next race. So yeah, I just waiting for my team uh, the information. So, but I hope they uh, can join the, the, the next race. For now, I wish you all the best luck okay, for today and much. tomorrow's final okay. race. Thank you very much. Great to hear from Harry Dama Monopo there. Really, really good job. And you know what? I think he's passed on some pretty good knowledge. I, I'm fairly sure Nanaka Saita is. Yeah, younger Japanese teammate has been looking and learning and uh, listened well because he's now improved on the best time so far. 1 minute 44.440 seconds, that's under the GT4 lap record. And he's about to decimate that. He's just gained another, well, nearly three tenths of a second through the first sector. Second session, eight tenths. He's a second and a bit up on that, so he may even get into the 1 minute 42s. This is a sensational lap from Seita Nonaka. Sector one improved sector two out of the three absolutely smashed it he's in turn 10 only two more to go oh keeps going round to the right long long turning then up through 10 over the crest at 11 turn 10 actually must be from a driver's point of view about the trickiest one on the entire circuit but uh, is he going to do a low one minute 43 may even get down into one minute 42 so how good is the final sector wow maybe a bit of a scrambled exit from the final quarter 1 minute 43.5 seconds. Wow, look at that. Absolutely clawed a huge amount of time out of his previous marker. This is only qualifying, of course, come the race uh, is when you actually set a time that counts for the lap record. But the fact he's uh, one and a quarter seconds quicker, almost 1.4 seconds quicker than the very best GT4 race time so far is impressive. There's a little bit of something flying off the track, put up by the front left wheel there. Don't know, it was a bit of rubber. Flying up, not from his tyres, by looks things. It was so good to hear from uh, Harry Dama just a short while ago about the plans for Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia, because the more teams from the more countries, the, the better, the more interesting the whole package becomes. And the desire to compete in the GT World Challenge Asia really grows year on year. Last year was the rebirth, and this is the blooming, if you will. Three years of the championship, 2017, 2018, 2019. We all know what happened in 2020 and 2021. The pandemic took the racing away, but we're back. Last year was a good toe back in the water, very successful, but this year is looking great. And brilliant to introduce these new teams and lots of teams coming from China to compete in the championship this year. Of course, quarantine issues were a problem in the past, but again, more teams, more top teams coming into play, different teams, always exciting times in motor racing. And certainly it looks so the fastest side will go to the GT4 Toyota. But let's go down to hear the fastest driver of all in GT3. All right, Alessio, fabulous start into the new season. How, how was the flying lap? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the, with the result. To be honest, I didn't expect it because, uh, yeah, in the practice we saw the Mercedes were, were really, really quick. So I'm a bit uh, surprised by the result, but uh, really happy, you know. Uh, it's been uh, four years I didn't race in Asia, and uh, so I'm happy to be back, and this is a great result to start. You have driven before at, Bu at Chang International Circuit. How, how does it feel after all these years? It's always a track I like. To be honest, I was here, so I was here two times with uh, GT World Challenge, and I was two times on pole, so uh, it's, it looks like it's, it's a circuit that fits me quite well. But yeah, I like uh, the atmosphere here, also I like the food, and uh, yeah, it's, the hot temperature also makes it really special. Uh, we can sense the confidence in your driving here. And also, you know, the package with you, Butikam and the Porsche is quite 
strong, I feel. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, as a Porsche driver now since uh, three years, uh, I know the car quite well. Uh, it's the, despite this is a new car, uh, first race weekend for me with this car. But uh, yeah, Vuti is doing a great job. Vuti always has been fast, so I'm really happy to team up uh, with him, and I'm sure we can do great things this year. So you start the race tomorrow. Uh, how do you think it will end? What do you aim for? Well, like I said, the Mercedes looks really strong, um, especially on a long run pace, I think. So uh, let's see. I think uh, we have the best places to start. Uh, like you say, Vuti is, is really quick. So maybe the combination of, of us both uh, can put us on top. But uh, yeah, I expect a tough race. And uh, yeah, let's, we will maximize today, we will learn from it today and then maximize again tomorrow. But uh, for sure we need to take points because our objective is the championship. Good luck at the race. Thank you. So those are the thoughts of Alessio Picariello and I do think that's a really, really strong lineup with Vutik on into Fuvasak. So, Seita Nonaka has set a best time of 1 minute 43.5 seconds. That's well under the lap record in GT4. Reporting into the pits, three and a bit minutes remain, but really not much point going out again because all you do is use up rubber and uh, obviously pole position for GT4 in the bag. But that's been a very, very tidy session from both of the drivers from Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia. Harry Dharma Monopo, we heard from him in that interview with uh, Emizawa. And then uh, Nonaka Seita climbing out, a race winner last year in uh, Super Formula Light, effectively Formula 3 in Japan, racing for Tom's top team in that. So he's got single-seater pace, and he's adapting to GTs very nicely indeed. Started racing a couple of years ago. But here, it will be a new track to him. Chang International Circuit, bowing to his crew. Very happy indeed. Job well done. And that Toyota Supra looked really, really nicely ban balanced, which is a, a credit to the team. They've uh, understood what was required from the rises and falls, the dips and troughs, of the circuit here, the Chang International Circuit at Buriram in Thailand. And uh, the flurry of qualifying has now therefore come to an end. Still two and a bit minutes remain, but no more needed to be done uh, from the Supra crew. And uh, so Seith Nanaka, Seith Nanaka doing a great job there. One minute, 43.512 seconds to take the fastest time for GT4. Now, just to let you know what's coming up ahead, this is, uh, what are we now? We're 12.22, local time here in Thailand. The first race of the weekend will be for the G GT3s and GT4s, the first of the two races, the opening round of the Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia. That's at 3.30, one hour of racing, driver change, some points around the middle stages of the race. Then we do it all over again tomorrow, and the Sunday race kicks off at 11 o'clock, so it's a morning race, and of course you've got an afternoon race today and a morning race tomorrow. You never know if they're going to have similar weather, because if you weren't with us uh, or watching on on the internet around the world, yesterday it was very, very wet. The cloud base here has certainly risen since we got into the circuit uh, fairly early this morning. We thought, oh, more rain is on the way, but we've had dry today. Hopefully it will stay that way. Um, but uh, for the crews down there, they've got one eye on their timing screens, one eye on the engineering screens and someone else in the team will be in charge of weather and that when it comes here you get a lot of it drivers know that but uh, certainly for a lot of them yesterday it became a little bit frustrating they just needed particularly some of the Porsche crews they've got their brand new uh, Porsches arriving this year and they just wanted to get out on the circuit and uh, deliver what they could and it was a little bit frustrating for them the, the latest uh, GT3 R's the 992 model Porsche uh, learning as they go, and uh, the fact that we just heard from Alessio Picariello there, who set the fastest time of all. But uh, certainly they're learning the circuit as they go, learning the cars, learning how to get the most out of their Pirelli rubber here in high humidity, hot temperatures, and uh, not to get in anybody else's way. 25 cars soon make a track seem very, very crowded indeed. And for qualifying, most notably, totally different to racing but when you only have 15 minutes and you've got to get heat in your tires you just don't want to trip up when you go for your flying laps a lot of the cars managed to get probably about four capable qualifying laps in there but uh, traffic was always an issue but it was about knowing their tires were getting faster and faster the drivers were becoming more and more accustomed but really it was about the rubber going down on the track Qualifying session two for the GT3s, clearly faster than session one, not just because there was more rubber on the track, but also a lot of the pro drivers in these largely pro-am driver lineups uh, came to deliver. Alessio Picariello 
delivered the goods best of all. He was a quarter of a second uh, faster than the best of the rest. But uh, we've had GT4 out on the track, and Nonaka Seta has just got out of that uh, Toyota Gazoo racing Indonesia Supra, and he's at the best time of all, 1 minute 43, 43.512 seconds, and uh, class pole for them. But it was all about getting used to the circuit, getting used to the car, and getting used to the weather. But here is Nonaka Seta with Amy. So it's his first time at Chang International Circuit and also in Thailand. So I would like to ask him about that. Nonaka Senshu, Hajimete no Thai, so she Hajimete no Kono Chang International Circuit. Todeska, Konshu, Hajimete no Rikon de Kara, Mema Gurushi Katamon de Skedamo. Hi, I know, my Nichiga, no, so it's in Senna, Kaken de, eh, Mazado, Kono Thai, so it's good to eat a TGR Indonesia team to, eh, Nihon no Thomas San, eh, Flat Out, Wag Sani, eh, Kansha Shimas. So he is very grateful for the team having been given us this opportunity. And every single day ever since he stand foot in Thailand was a learning process. So he is still in the process of learning. Nonaka Senshu, single seater is not there, but GT is not there, but what kind of circuit is it? What kind of circuit is it? It's a very flat road, it's very fast to drive. So I asked him about the circuit because it's quite unique. We don't have this flatness. And he said, yes, it's quite easy um, for him to drive around. He has been driving single seaters and also GT cars. Um, but he's having fun. The long straight is fun for him as well. So um, we'll see what we can give at the race. もう so as for the race itself, um, he will do his best. Um, he is uh, getting gathering data and you know seeing how everything feels, and um, hopefully he can um, push as far as he can throughout the season. And he's very much looking forward to it. Well, very good to hear from Nanaka Seta. He made it look very easy indeed, I must say. And thank you, Amy, for all the translation as well. Great to have new drivers experiencing new places. And Thailand is just a delight for everybody who visits it. We learn something different every single time. But to me, being able to look out to the local deities in, in the wooded hill land around the circuit here at Buriram, great to have such national identification. But let's take a look. Take a look. Uh, the first session, it was... Uh, Harry Dama Monopo, who took the GT4 pole, the second session, also for Tuzu, Toyota Gazoo Racing Indonesia. Se Nonaka Seita doing a very, very impressive job out there on the circuit, uh, lapping well beneath GT4 lap record pace. So they've got the, the pole positions for today's race. That's this afternoon at 3.30 uh, local time. And then, of course, tomorrow, when we race in the morning, we race at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Track conditions right now improving by the minute. It was very wet yesterday here at the Chang International Circuit. And thank goodness it wasn't that wet for qualifying. We had four qualifying sessions, thick and fast they came, just 15 minutes apiece. Qualifying session number one, taking pole position for this afternoon's race. Car number 88, one of the two triple eight JMR Mercedes, and it was driven beautifully by Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim. And he took that to qualifying time. Just ahead of the number 29, Phantom Pro Racing Audi. And it's great to have a Chinese team up there in the reckoning as well. It was thick, it was fast, it was some brilliant lap times. And the prize of the day goes to Alessio Piccariello, who was fastest of all of the entire weekend so far. 1 minute 34.022 seconds to put the 911 AAS Motorsport Porsche on pole position for tomorrow's race. So for the teams now, they've had a look at the track in the very wet, the slightly wet, now in the dry. They've got to analyse their figures. It's not about qualifying anymore. It's about two one-hour races. How best to make their tyres work in what will be, no doubt, hot and humid conditions. The drivers do their bit, but you really understand in... The Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia, the engineers have a huge role to play because the temp temperatures and the track conditions can be very difficult indeed, but 
going into this afternoon's race. It's a Mercedes on pole, the 888 JMR number 88. Will that still be there at the sharp end of the field in first position at the end of an hour's racing? Do come and join us this afternoon to find out whether that will be the case. It's hot, it's humid, but we will take the weather condition right now because it's dry. The racing ahead is going to be absolutely fantastic. Ha, ha, ha.